And for that one, I would like to first start to invite uh, Mr. Björn Osby from uh, Lulu Group. Björn, can you hear me? Are you with us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, Björn. Hello. How are you doing? Long time no see. So you can hear me. Good. So who will ask the question? You or me? <laughs> well, I would uh, first of all hand over to you and ask you uh, what is your feedback to this webinar, to the presentations you have uh, uh, listened in, and do you have any specific questions to our speakers? Yes, thank you. Well, um, this is actually the first time <clears throat> we start talking since. The, the problem we are facing here now is that all these good news that we are talking about reach people who understand it or who, or who don't understand it. And the, the problem is not those who understand, but those who don't understand. So, so when you are talking, these technologies, the people who don't understand, you have to find a way to get them to understand. This is what I want to tell you. And I want to thank uh, each one of the uh, presenters here, um, especially to, to, to Frank, because he touched something very important. He touched something what we call balanced plants. A balanced plant is more used in industrial refrigeration than in commercial refrigeration. Uh, when the plants are so small that you can hardly measure the differences, but when you come to a little bit bigger installations, we have a we have a problem with calculating the capacity of these plants. The guy who asked for a compressor plant to be uh, installed in his supermarket he needs to be sure that he has enough capacity. So we start with 10% over capacity. And then we have 100% calculated capacity. <clears throat> and then we all know that uh, a plant works on, say, 45, 55, up to 60% uh, of the uh, installed load after a week or 10 days of, of operation, which creates a quite a number of problems. First of all, we get, especially when we have stop and start situations, we have very low pressure, evaporation temperature. We have uh, uh, big delta T's coming up. We have drying of the food. So what I want to say, basically, overcalculated plants is a menace. So I was happy when, when Frank mentioned that. And then when I got to learn about the easy uh, pumps and fans and whatever, we, we can have frequency driven uh, these things. There is a lot of things we can do. So I just want to thank the guys for the opening eyes of those things. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, contribution, Bjorn. Uh, let me uh, uh, forward that immediately to Frank. Uh, Frank, if you can join me, please. The, I mean, the, the over specification and um, with with part load with the part load calculations. What what would you say about that? How can we address this best? Well, the best way of addressing it, in my view, is that based on the location of a supermarket, we we establish some sort of a of a baseline profile, or based on the buying patterns of the customers that we know already so that we, we, we can have some level of reasonably generic profile that, that we can sort of agree upon. Uh, and it, it, it can be that uh, one chain has one profile that they apply in a region because the, the accuracy of the profile is not the key. The key is to have a reasonably uniform distribution across what is expected because it will never be accurate no matter what we do. And then requesting not manufacturers to specify i mean yes it's nice to know that a motor is ie5 but depending on the technology applied what is the part load efficiency actually of the motor that is not part of the of the standard for the motor so so rather than specifying efficiency points 
at full load, we should ask for energy consumption over a low profile. And that way we can we can better look at it. Then the challenge with the refrigeration system is we we need to have a whole a full view of the system and only only uh, a refrigeration installer that has access to the simulation software can actually look at if I make modulation on on the condenser side, what impact does that then have on the compressor side? There are standardized tools in the market that, that can help with these kinds of simulations, but they are essential if we want to really optimize also for part load efficiency. Um, and that is, it is a, a complex approach. It does require a higher level of knowledge, but it's what is necessary when you look at refrigeration systems because we have multiple applications that are in a closed loop and interacting with each other. And it's the only way to get that balanced approach on where is the best way to actually optimize and how should we do it to get the lowest total energy consumption because nobody cares about an efficiency percentage at the end of the day it's the energy bill we pay to the utility that's actually the key and we need to bring that as low as possible thank you um alexander uh do you see it do you see it similar even like from you you have uh, looked at it from a, or your presentation has looked at it from a holistic side uh, how much are missing standards or how much how much are uh, missing industry guidance is uh, of relevance when it comes to to specifications yeah it is actually especially in this region unfortunately it, there is a lot of uh, of um, oversizing like bjorn was commenting so uh, we believe that having a, a, con a bigger condenser or having a bigger pack it is something that will prevent us of, uh, of having um, a shortage. So in the supermarkets that I have seen that uh, you start to enhance and work with, with frequency converter and you start to balance the pressure and, and, and so on, we have seen that the condensers start to work on 40, 30% of the capacity. We have seen even in full load of the supermarket, a, a rack of four compressors for, for chilling and, and four compressors for, for freezing, it is using only two compressors and the third is starting for small amount of hours. So we, we have seen that actually there is a big tendency to oversize. So when we oversize, we overconsume. That's, that's the, simple, uh, the simple norm here. And I, I agree with, uh, with all of them. The studies to do a supermarket is like what Frank was saying. It is based on what kind of efficiency I want to have. What is my top of energy that I want to pay? That makes me, according to that volume of sales, something uh, you know affordable and that that is profitable for me. And from there we should start. This is the way, at least in Europe, things start. It it definitely requires a lot of knowledge. That, uh, that it's the challenge, as I said, in my part, uh, that we, we have in this uh, region, but it's something that it is easily tackled, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Andrea, the, uh, you have uh, given a, a quite a good overview over the retrofit options which are available for supermarkets, uh, or at least uh, many of them. How do you how do you see if you if you uh, look at the at at current supermarket how do you approach the the full uh, issue of improving the efficiencies? It's, it's a good question actually, Marcus, in the sense that uh, the the major part of the supermarkets uh, that I see are really using the basic 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 technology available. Uh, I mean, the, the technology that we are speaking now, I mean, in the retrofit options that I presented before are options that are available in the market probably since 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So it's nothing new. Uh, we need to uh, educate, let me say, the supermarket owner and the consultants in order to apply what is the best technology. Uh, how to how to approach? I suggest to approach uh, uh, with the priority that I showed before, in the sense that uh, there is a priority that is the energy demand of the refrigeration. So uh, 
let's focus on the actions that are easy implementable that can give the maximum value and uh, with the minimum investment so what is the best return of investment at the end uh, and then apply uh, apply consequently again the, the the technology available are, are many mm -hmm. return of investment anyway is the key uh, Bjorn, has mentioned, Bjorn has mentioned it, um, the, the knowledge is a key factor here, that people understand what technologies are available and that they also uh, understand how to apply them. Um, in terms of, of uh, education or in terms of, of possibilities, the industry has to, to ramp up uh, this knowledge in the market. Uh, can you think about any um, suggestions or any activities and in, uh, initiatives we should uh, look at? As an, as an industry body? I think that this webinar is uh, one of the good way to reach out all everybody and to, let me say, let them aware about what are the technologies. Uh, we should reach maybe higher level in order to let the, let me say, should be maybe a decision top down. So we should go to energy efficiency uh should be not be in the hand of the supermarket owner but me must be let me say uh imposed like was in the uh, european union at the end mm -hmm. um i have a question for um for michele um your your solution with the with the dc uh Technology looks like a very easy uh, plug and play uh, option. Is it is it as easy as it as it as it looks like? Is it a low cost, quick fix uh, to to really change something on on the energy bill? Yeah, let let me say that uh, also in this case uh, <clears throat> there is uh, uh, in order to introduce the C technology, uh, you need to find out uh, uh, the right package to be offered uh, for any uh, DC technology uh, solutions. So uh, it is uh, it is uh, let's say it is more complicated the concept than the actual uh, operation and the uh, finding out of the right solution. So because we are talking about uh, finding out. Uh, the right DC compressors with the right capacity, the specific inverter which needed to be coupled with, uh, with the DC, this compressor, so the specific match between a compressor and inverter, and then all the logic in any case, uh, so the, the brain, let's say, of the system is already developed and inside these advanced electronic controllers, so the, 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 that are uh, user-friendly from, uh, from this point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And a uh, question to Tony. Hi, Marcus. Hey, um, how many how many fans are there in uh, in an average supermarket? Uh, can you give a do you have like an average where you say okay there's uh, an average uh, I don't know 100 200 fans which could be uh, an option for retrofits. Okay, so, so an average would be uh, two fan, two small, in, in a display case, you normally have two fans per meter. That's, a, that's an average, okay? Um, but so if you take the, um, the smaller supermarkets like the uh, one I showed for the Henderson Group, the Spa, they're, they're almost sort of uh, large convenience stores. Uh, I mean, they had about uh, 100 fans in each store. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a large supermarket, it could be you know, a, a, a lot more, a lot more. So that, uh, that is, in the end, then a significant, a significant uh, area to, to look at for retrofits because people are usually not aware that there are so many fans actually in use in, in operation in such buildings. Oh, definitely. Everything from the door curtain to the display case to the condenser to the bakery equipment to the extracts, you know, the, when they're cooking food as well, if they have a, a food to go area, they have an extract system. They're probably going a heating system of some sort. There's, there's fans absolutely everywhere. Um, even one of the things I was going to pick up on that, that um, uh, I think um, Andreas was talking about doors on, on refrigeration display cases. 
Um, we, we've developed a new uh, case fan, that, which is mod bust. So if the door is shut, then we can slow the speed down of the fan and keep that pressure. And if the door keeps open a lot, then you can speed up the fan. So we, we can do things like that nowadays. And, and that wasn't, you know, that wasn't available even five years ago. So that's Modbus controllable and it's an intelligent fan, that literally even for just a small fan inside a display case. And they're widely available now and, and quite competitively priced as well, those type of fans. Right. Okay. Um, I have one question to, uh, um, yeah, to anybody who wants to, to uh, answer that, and this is uh, regarding pre-cooling. How much is, is pre-cooling of condensers a factor here in the Middle East? Is there anybody of you uh, able to cover that? Could I, this is Bjorn, could I comment to this one? Uh, yes, sure, sure Bjorn. Um, and this this is not a statement, it's more like, a, like to open the subject. Um, mostly of the plants that we, central plants that we install, as I told you, has a spare capacity, more than less, of 40 to 45 percent. The running operational load are so mm -hmm. much less. and and uh, if I could make it my, my, my dream supermarket refrigeration, I would not use any of these systems. I will go back to my industrial refrigeration experience and install uh, a, a glycol uh, chiller. Because Sorry, again. A, 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 a brine chiller, a glycol, water glycol chiller that, uh, that I will connect to uh, my district cooling uh, chill water with the with the with the water cool condenser, and I will produce as much uh, cold glycol I could during night times and whenever, and use my all spare capacities to produce uh, an ice bank sort of thermal storage tank. There are so many things we could do here. So uh, uh, I have some experience. Experience. I have installed uh, 600 evaporators in Abu Dhabi with the uh, glycol, and they have been running for 10 years now with very, very good experience. And we will reduce the, the refrigerants down to maybe a volume of uh, less than half of what is in, in, in the system now, uh, because there will be a primary chiller and a, and a heat exchanger. So, so I, I am very much open for, for this one to with whoever in, is interested to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Bern. Uh, does anybody of the speakers want to comment on that? Yes, uh, Marcus, I, I, I support uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, Bjorn. Actually, those are the so-called uh, water loop systems that uh, there are plenty of supermarkets in uh, in Europe running in that way it's a very practic way of having uh, small refrigeration systems in each cabinet and the condensation is happening with water um, and uh, the heat produced by cabinets it is not there in the shop hence you can reduce the size of the air conditioning and uh, the refrigeration system start to become kind of a plumbing because you will only need to control the, 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 the water and the, and the temperature of the water and, and the drips. And it is a nice system that work in a small and in, in, in big size uh, supermarket as well. It can be perfectly combined with the air conditioning system because it is the same chiller. It is just a matter of mixing some heat exchangers just to, to change the temperature for the air conditioning. And, uh, and you can have only one plant, like he's, uh, like he's saying, one chiller that it is cooling glycol, which is recirculating in all the plant, in all the supermarkets, or all, all the sea store. It's a, it's a technology that exists. It has been there, again, more than five, seven years. And uh, in, in, in small spaces especially, it is moving in that direction, because then you have smaller plants to, to produce a, 
chilled water for, for both things, air conditioning and the refrigeration. So you reduce the number of equipment. So yes, brilliant, uh, brilliant idea and, uh, and very strong and reliable as well. Thank you. So uh, yes, we uh, are... Sorry, just uh, let me add that uh, Marcus also the water loop helps uh, in the implementation of CO2 since the cabinets uh, come already built by the constructors. So the installation is uh, really more simpler. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we have to we have to come to an end. We are way over time uh, today. Bjorn, as well, thank you for uh, chiming in, and I'm looking forward uh, to our next uh, physical meeting once uh, we can uh, do that again as a frequent uh, guest to our working group for refrigeration. Uh, we're 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 missing you. So um, I would like to thank all of you uh, guys again for today, for your efforts, for your presentations, and uh, for the interesting content. Um, again, we are uh, way over time today, but I hope that uh, the audience uh, apologizes for that. I think it was uh, quite an interesting uh, webinar for most. Thank you, and uh, we will be in touch with you shortly with the analytics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.